Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I've got a very, very quick uh, Thrifty Thursday haul for you. There's not much stuff here, but I did go back to the salvage yard um, and they had, I think it was like 80% off everything, 80%. So I got this whole pile of stuff for $12. Um, and that's because if I've spoken about the salvage yard before, I've told you that their prices are usually really expensive. So 80% off is a good is a good deal for this um but it's you know it still cost me 12 bucks but whatever that's fine before i start i think in the last video i showed you um the quilt that i'm going to be making out of entirely recycled scrap fabric and i've got some squares here to show you so the quilt is definitely um going to be much much smaller than i thought it was going to be um but that's okay I also, you know, I've never quilted before and these squares are not the same size. So look, we're not making a quilt, but um, but I am gonna just, you know, put the squares together because they're all kind of random sizes. Um, put the squares together, make a large patch of fabric and then I'll do something with it. I'll turn it into a little a little um, zip bag or, um, or I'll do something. So anyway, these are the squares or rectangles or four-sided shapes, if you want to call them that, that I've been um, putting together. And I love the colors, they're so bright, it's gonna be really cool. Um, and I've also got a humongous stack here of, um, of little squares that I've put together that need to be sewn together. They've just been ironed flat, some of them. Some of them have been ironed flat, some of them still need to be. So there's that. All right, so at the um, salvage yard, the first thing that I got is, again, for my um, for my English paper piecing quilt. So not this, because this is something different. But for my English paper piecing quilt that I'm working on, um, I got this, like, little tablecloth. It's almost like a tea towel type thing. It's got beautiful embroidery here. That's because my English paper piecing quilt that I'm making is going to be, like, really... Um, kind of light pastel colors, lots of florals, lots of really like delicate um, embroidery. So I collect, um, yeah, embroidery like this so that I can add it to my um, hand sewn little quilt that I'm working on. So there's that. I picked up a collection of these, like, what do you call these books? Pulp fiction? I mean, is that what you call them? These kind of like cheap stories with really cheap paper. I think they're I think they're like literally what they would call like pulp fiction books. Like just kind of read them and throw them in the bin kind of situation. Um, but I loved the front covers, so I'm hoping that when I get time, I because I've got lots of um, lots of ring bindings. Like when I'm talking about ring binding, I mean like the binding this this wire binding. I've got heaps of that left from when I used to do markets. Um, and I thought, yeah, I've got to use it up. So I thought I could make some cute little notebooks. So I've got Texas Tornado. This one's for my sister. She's my little sister. She's my only sister, um, but she's the little sister. Um, and so I, love, <laughs> just, I thought it was really cool. I thought it was like really fun. And I will have to erase her off all of the pencil marks here. But um, yeah, she'll love this because she's 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 funny. So yeah, this is <laughs> this is cool for her. Um, and I got this one because I just thought it was really I loved the illustration on it. So who knows what these stories are? They could be like totally um, you know, they could be like I have no idea. Are they um, I don't know. Anyway. We got them. They they're great. They're fun. So yeah, those. Um, I got this vintage guide to Perth. So I live in Perth. It's really cool, and you can find local vintage um souvenirs and ephemera. So this looks like it's from. I couldn't tell how old this was. Then I looked at this picture up here, and I thought. That kind of looks really like 1950s almost, but this, because it's glossy paper and it's in such good condition, it didn't seem like it was that old. Um, so what I'll have to do is I'll have to go through the map and see like, you know, what's there 
and whether these things have names like does that make sense i have to go through and, and figure out like whether there's attractions on this map that like didn't exist at a certain time for example what have we got here the perth bowling and croquet croquet club like that hasn't existed there for like decades and decades um there's no you know i i can't tell i really can't tell here we go here are all the places of interest so there's a lot that's missing <laughs> the land of make-believe like what is the land of make-believe this is future jess here i've done some research the land of make-believe was um created in like the 1960s which dates our map so our map is actually from the early to mid 1960s um and then the land of make-believe was shut down and i think the early 2000s so i guess that's hilarious so i live in this area here <laughs> and there's no streets in here at all because this whole area like didn't exist Wallyabup, like that I've never heard of that suburb before. So this is really cool because it's so, it's so old. Yeah, this is very cool. So I'm very, I was very happy to find this. I don't even know. It probably cost me something like 20 cents. So that was, that was great. Um, I got this tourist map of Wittenoom. So if you're not a Western Australian or you're not an Australian, you're probably going to be like, why, why do you have a map? Like what, who, what is Wittenoom? Wittenoom was a tourist like was a tourist town um that was very famous for its, its its asbestos mine and then obviously when the world started to figure out how dangerous asbestos was they literally shut Wittenoom down and it is now like fenced you cannot go there you cannot visit there it's like a toxic waste area um the, the whole town just it's like a ghost it's a ghost town now um, it's very sadly, lots of people, you know, they reckon like the majority of people who grew up in Wittenoom or were working in Wittenoom now have asbestos related diseases, um, which is really sad, but stuff about Wittenoom, um, is really interesting to me just because of the fact that it was this, um, you know, this huge tourist area and then it just, they just shut it down. So yeah, they talk about the history of it from the like 1960s. Um, the mine was closed in 1966. This action seemed to indicate the end of the town as a mining centre, but with the recent discovery of iron ore, the number of visitors who come to view the Hammersley Ranges and the gorges of Wittenoom now appear assured. But no one actually goes to Wittenoom anymore. It doesn't exist. They they like took the signs away from the place. It's like deleted off the map. So, yeah, so this is from the 60s, I'm guessing, and it's a huge map of Wittenoom. So that might interest people, West, like people interested in Western Australian history, I guess. That's why I picked that up. I got some postcards. I got a postcard of um, Venice. So, oops, so I'm going to add that to my travel journal because this looks like kind of from the 1950s or 60s. I love the kind of edges on this postcard um a postcard from the gold coast i love vintage gold coast stuff because the gold coast in queensland is you know it's kind of like the it was like the what would you call it the miami or palm springs <laughs> of australia so this is cool and this was written in 1974 and it's someone's actual postcard i haven't read it yet but i'll read it one day and I think here's a motel. I love vintage motel photos. So I had to get this one. This was from 1965. And it's again from Surface Paradise in the Gold Coast. And just look at all the fun these people are having. There's ladies down here wearing like Hawaiian grass skirts and lays, um, which is just um, like, can you imagine walking around your hotel pool dressed as a Hawaiian? You're not even in Hawaii. You're in the Gold Coast of Australia. <laughs> love it. It was fantastic. Um, I got a whole stack of these airmail um, paper pads and I didn't get them for the paper inside because the paper inside is obviously just boring lined paper. It's not exciting at all. But I love the, um, the front covers 
And so I would love to turn these into travel journals because I've got one, two, three. You can see the recycled paper they're made of. That's really cool. That's how you can tell that that was super cheap. <laughs> um, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got eleven of them. So let me know if, you know, if you were to buy a travel journal, would you be interested in one that had this as its front cover? I think it's really cool because um, it's an, you know, it's a vintage airmail uh, paper pad. And I just kind of like that it's got like a bit of a gold metallic thing there. And yeah, I don't know how old these are. They look like maybe 50s or 60s. So it's crazy that people, you know, kept this stuff. So I got some of those. That's just the back. I'll throw that. Put that in my recycle bin because that's just nothing. And lastly, I got a whole collection of magazines. Some different ones that I haven't had before. I'll just um, zoom out so then you can see them a little bit easier. So I got a Woman's Day from 1973. Again, 1973 is a bit late for me. Um, I don't usually collect things from, like, I usually go 1975 or earlier. Um, so 1973 is getting up there. But I do like some of the 70s magazines because they're they've got a lot of, like, ads in colour. So I got that one. I got the Women's Weekly from 1968. Women's Weeklies are always the best to get because the pages are massive. Look at that fantastic ad for Fiji. Love that. The fashion pages are always great too um so much color so much so many ads um it's always those ads for uh for ford pills the diet pills look at all these hairstyles how did she get her hair like that oh my gosh I love the 60s because they used to use so many hair pieces. This is how they had their amazing hair. Don't be fooled into thinking that women's hair was that amazing in the 1960s. Um, I got picks from 1950. This was a great pickup because I don't usually find magazines, you know, as old as 1950. Usually they're pretty expensive. Um, but I did get this one. So lots of fantastic ads in here. Pix is usually kind of a black and white news magazine, a little bit like Time magazine. So, you know, not so interesting for fashion and things, but like, look at that. Look at the cat, Siamese cat. Oh, I don't know about this ad, it's not very politically correct. So, yeah, just, you know, usual news. I got this People magazine from 1966. I've never, um, I've never found one of these magazines before, so this is cool to have a look through. I don't know what it, who it's kind of, like, who its target audience was. Probably just, you know, men and women. And my um, camera turned off, so, yeah, so that was People magazine. And um, this one is Australasian Post, 1967 fabulous earrings <laughs> um report on nudists interesting shrimpton so again it's like a you know general kind of life type magazine The Sornet. It's a sauna that you can stand in. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. What is this? How to be a special kind of man. Interesting. Interesting. All right, so there's that one. Another picks from 1967. I just love, love looking through these magazines. Obviously, I do it off, um, I do it off camera and I sit and read everything. Um, it's really interesting. 
but I'm not going to do it here. 1965 picks. It's quite black and white. I think it's because it maybe used to come out like every day or every week or something. Australasian Post, 1967. Look at that! Wow. Another one that I've never found before. This is Modern Screen from when? 1967. So I think this is, oh, look at the ads. It looks like kind of more like young, like maybe a late teens magazine. Oh, six hair pieces in one, the go-go tail. <laughs> oh, it's a ponytail hair piece, how great. Stop ugly nails, that's my nails right now. They are fugly because I got my acrylics taken off for the first time in like six months. Um, and I'm trying to restore them so that just before my wedding I can get them um, done. So yes. So it must be all about, you know, like actors, actresses. Oh, <gasps> Rock Hudson. Love him. Oh, it's posters. I don't know who this is. Oh, it's Nancy Sinatra. Yes. Rock Hudson though. I have a picture of him up on my up on my little um bookshelf of like favorite things. Natalie Wood. Elvis. Marriage problems for Elvis. How do you add three full inches to your bust line in eight weeks? You can't do that. Oh, look at all these ads for the Better Homes and Gardens books. I think I have had, oh, I have got a Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. I think I've got the new cookbook. Elvis's new album. Oh my God, I love it. This is so great. We've got another picks from 1966. Not so much interesting stuff. Um, and this is a German magazine from, I don't know when, um, but interesting to find because I usually only find Australian magazines. And this is a German one. So really cool. Look at all the ads. It's so nice to find like some, you know, different, some magazines from different countries. Cause I just, I get ads that I've never seen before. Usually, you know, the Australian women's magazines, it's always like Arnott's biscuits and Bushels tea, but um, no, it's nice to get some different, um, you know, different ads for sure. Not that I can read any of them. Oh, that is so graphic, sorry. This looks like, I don't know, oh, the magazine is called Quick. Okay, so that's the name of the magazine. So that's that. That is all of my little pickups from the last haul that I, or the last, yeah, the last haul that I've done. Hopefully you enjoyed that and I will see you again in another one. See ya.